Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Gather around, gather around. Get your hot tea, get your coffee, get your liquor. I don't know what the fuck you want. Roll up a blunt. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We have producer Rob in the building. Hola, everybody. And we're feeling so much better. We sound so oh, much better. So much better. Uh, what medicines were you on, bro? Everything from Mucinex to nasal sprays to uh, elderberry lozenges, uh, lemon, uh, hot toddy here and there. Because, okay. Because uh, it helped me. That's I know. Good. I know you got a different... Uh, no, I'm, I'm not mad at the hot toddies. Uh, I mean... I bet back in the day, a lot of medicines had alcohol in it. Yep. Uh, I've taken hot, I've done the hot toddy before, especially back when I had my tonsils, bro. When I had my tonsils, a lot I of was, people don't even know that I was man. having to do everything. Uh, weed really helped me. That's what with, I hear with my allergies. It's weird. I started. I started uh, looking. Did you it up. research it? I did after you mentioned and it. Did other people like? Yeah, other people had the same. So then I don't know what effect that. I mean, THC is like it, it's good it's for so many things, man. I mean, yeah, though, just the weed plant in general. It's like a little miracle yeah, drug. It really is. But hey, man, legalized freedom tour. Um, allegedly, uh, I was given some weed in um, in Naples, and allegedly I brought that motherfucker back across about six, seven state lines. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe Diaz in the fanny. In the fanny, cocksucker. Uh, Legalized Freedom Tour. Next stop, we're going back to Florida, y'all. West Palm Beach, Florida, April 3rd. I'm going, going back, back. Then we have Tacoma, Washington, April 7th. Nashville, Tennessee, April 14th. Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, Texas, May 12th through the 15th. Do not miss it. New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th. Lubbock, May 22nd. Bryan College Station, May 28th. Two shows. San Angelo, June 3rd. Do not miss it. Odessa, all my people out there in West Texas, come through June 4th. We're going to be at the Ector Theater. That's E-C-T-O-R. Uh, Austin, Texas, June 9th. All the details, all the links, all the dates. Chingobling.com. We're also hitting Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, California, Ontario, California, Denver, Colorado. I'm crisscrossing the map, y'all. 30 cities. Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea. Um, if you want to sponsor the tour, I want to have a little retractable banner and I take all my pictures and you can have your logo in the, in the photo. So turn the photo fans into your marketing, uh, email us red at Gmail or Marisol at chingobling.com. We're also hitting Oxnard, California, San Antonio, Addison, all that and more chingobling.com. Por favor, believe it. Big nah. So we just knocked out an episode of RPT, red pill tamales. Fire. Um, dude, we talked about like. The DeSantis uh, anti-grooming, they want to call it Don't Say Gay. That's what the left is calling it. Um, like, just stuff about the educational system. And, of course, we always talk about the economy. And I was telling Rob that I wanted to formulate a joke, if possible, right, where I can kind of, like, tell the audience. <clears throat> now, this is very clunky, right? This is very clunky. It's it's wordy. I don't really have the setup punch set up. But, basically, I, wa- I want to kind of be like, Y'all remember going to Mexico growing up and you'd go over there and, you know, your cousins, man, it was just it was just culture shock. Like their economy was different. You know, everything was different. So you'd go down there and and, you know, they might be wearing a a shirt or something. Your mom sent them from last year or they might still have the same pair of shoes. You saw them from last year, but they're cleaning them up. They're having to do more with less. You know, they make decisions like if the if the blender breaks, they're trying to fix it. They don't just go to Target, buy another one. And, you know. Our country's going through some stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Our dollar ain't hitting the same. You know, they squeezing us at the pump. We don't know what's going on, but basically, we're having to do more with less. We're having to fix the blender. We're having to clean up the Nikes. You know, you having to rock that Vince's shirt like, man, I'm going to bring it back. I mean, I'm going to cut the sleeves off. I'm going to stitch this to, to make it new again. You know, you're taking care of your shit better. You the Mexicans now. You know, basically, we are the Mexicans now. Dude, that, that imagery, like, if you just say that, people, a lot of people in the audience will know exactly what you're talking about. Like, when you said it for the first time a little while ago, and I was like, holy, I, I, it put me back in that place. So I know exactly, I mean, from the animating, like, how the roads were, it's either dirt, it's dust, you know, it looks like potholes. Potholes, you literally see, like, piles of garbage on one corner, maybe, or just, like, junk, and then... Or, you, or somebody converts their, their living room into a tiendita, and they're selling, like candies and tortillas or something that was a legit on the corner of where my yeah. abuelita lives sodas yep same thing and you take the they you would always put the crates if i'm not mistaken of the sodas back in the the crates of glass and you take the crates to the store el embase yeah yeah, yeah uh-huh. that's what it is so once you see the embase system hit america <laughs> like when you when you're like hey anybody want sodas for dinner go get some empty bottles and run them up to the corner house where uh, you know old mrs smith el embase damn i've heard that in 20 years and dude, like we were, we were, um, 
I don't want to say like property hunting, but we were exploring in the neighborhood, right? Third Ward is pretty big and you get everything from, you know, doctor mansions on one side to like economic, like, dude, like some, it looked like third world country. Like there's some parts of third Ward where you fucking around. You probably don't want to be there at night. No. Uh, you about to witness a whole bunch of drug deals and shit. And you just be thinking like, holy fuck, how do people live like this like the house like bro you don't have a roof on your house like there's people camping out i mean just little dead-end streets with the little korean store and it just looks like an economic nuclear bomb like these folks were just left behind well i've heard jokes from black comedians i think it was during the recession where it was basically saying like oh y'all having to live like us now like basically like the joke was basically like white folks are gonna have to start eating you know, more basic foods and having to cut back and congratulations, you living like the rest of America type of thing. But uh, I'm not sure why I brought it up, but um, some of them parts of third war, it looked worse than Mexico. Oh yeah. Where it's like, holy shit. You know, it's crazy because you hear developers talk about how you can just go, we can all see like what the city's supposed future projections are for certain areas. And I never really think to do that, but when you see, like, where I dropped you off the other day, all the gentrification. That's, yeah, Edo. It, yeah, it's just, is that Edo? That's Edo. Yeah, yeah that's Edo. I mean, I'm in that that side of, of town in a hot-ass hot minute, and they look over, and I'm like, this doesn't even look the same like it did just five years ago. Well, when my parents first immigrated from Mexico, and um, my sisters were probably toddlers or just little girls, I wasn't born yet, it was one of those, like, we have to live off of Polk and La Canal. Like, we have to live in Second Ward. It's like we're refugees, you know what I mean? Like we're immigrants and we're going to live in a garage apartment in Edo. Not knowing that like, what, 20, 30 years from now, it's like, holy shit, can you afford? Yeah. Like, like the grant, like there's some people in Edo where the houses are falling, but it's like, we're not going to sell till we can get like 600,000 for this. So the reason we were exploring that part of Third Ward is because something had came across our a desk where it was like, holy shit, there's a duplex for sale right now for this amount. And it's like, stop what you're doing. Go look at it right now because somebody's about to snatch this up. In a day. A, a duplex. And then you look at the picture. It's like, oh, this is like freshly renovated. Big ass yard. Third Ward is coming up. There's some really nice parts. You know, there's like museum district adjacent. You know, there's a lot of bustling you know, people getting money out here too. There's, you know, restaurants and bars and, you know, there's parts that are popping. But we went to go look at that duplex that was for sale for that amount. And we're like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. We didn't see. Uh -uh. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. You know, you see other people like developers and like investors and shit going through <laughs> looking around like, yeah, uh, I, might, I might I might invest here in a couple of years. But like <laughs> these folks are going to get pushed out, man. Some of the people that are like still just scraping by hanging on like bro rents are gonna go up taxes property taxes all that shit about to go up in this area what are you gonna do they're gonna have to find they're probably gonna send them to Pearland. you know like trump and these republicans been telling y'all like the suburbs ain't finna be the burbs no more <laughs> God. they about to mix it all up <laughs> gotta get the land gotta get the land out there and build your own little compound what we're we gonna call it um uh what do you call it not a cult but uh yeah i guess a compound yeah you gotta be careful with them words bro so Fuck so it. um so yeah I, I told the little the premise that you had wanted me to tell um i wanted to cover i wanted to talk about the time i met cat williams yeah i was looking him up to see if he was in the news which he is but go on oh yeah let me know <coughs> go, yeah go ahead <clears throat> so um I, you know because i want to make these chingo chats episodes people they they eat up the rpt episodes they're loving the red pilt the podcast episodes and y'all sleeping on the chingo chats well, we could get to talk about like Will Smith slapping shit out Chris Rock or, you know, we could react and roast. Um, hell, we even talked about some pop culture stuff yeah, like Kyrie Irving and stuff on the RPT. And we talked about the Oscars. So go check that out. Um, yo, so Cat Williams is one of my top favorites. And I forget what year it was. It might have been like. Fuck, what year was that, bro? It might have been like 20. <sighs> It might have been 2010, 2011, verdad? Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that I was scheduled to meet with Nick Cannon in LA, like um, on a Wednesday or some shit. It was, um, I don't know if that had been scheduled, but that we had some talks about linking up uh, because a lot of people had tweeted him. He, he was 
always looking for cast members for um, Wildin' Out. And a lot of people had tweeted my name. And he's like, oh, shit, Chingo Bling. Okay, never thought about that. And he, like, DM'd me or something, right? So around the same time, a buddy of mine named Rick uh, Najera, who is originally from San Diego, but he's been in the Hollywood system. He's been in, like, he worked for CBS for a long time. I don't even know what he's up to these days, but he published a few books. He directed a few plays and monologues. And I had worked with him early in my career. He visited uh, Houston. He was doing a one-man play. And um, he reached out way back in the MySpace days. He was like, hey, I got tickets for you and yours. Come check out the show. We can have dinner afterwards and see what you're up to, Mr. Parody Guy. So that's how we first hit it off. And, and later he had me participate in one of his monologues. I played a character and it was shit he had written and I sucked at it. I wasn't a good theater actor and I didn't do stand up at the time. So I didn't really understand the timing of, the, of how the jokes were written. But anyway, Rick hits me up. He's like, hey, man, you like Cat Williams? I'm like, boy, fuck yeah. Cat Williams was like on top yeah. at the time. Like he, all his jokes were viral. It was like, pfft, it's like he was like Kevin Hart mixed with somebody else at the time. So he's like, you want to meet him? I'm like, what? Fuck yeah. Tell me when I'm there. He said, and so I'm like, wait, how do you know Cat Williams? I asked Rick, right? He's like, well, he's like, you know that script I sent you, right? It was like a... Uh, it was almost like a revamp of old Yeller in the hood. Mm -hmm. He had called it Ghetto Dog. So he had this script and he had showed it to me. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. I gave him my notes. Like, yeah, this shit's funny. You're like, yeah, I'm down. Let me know when you want to make it, right? Let me know when you get all your ducks in a row. So he's like, all right, remember that script? He's like, I showed it to Cat. And, and, and I'm like, okay, tell me more. Does he want to be in it? And I'm going to be in it? What's going on? He's like, well, well, look, man. He started asking me, well, who all do you know? Who all can you get? And he's like, I just started rattling off names of like Latino actors and different people that I know. And I was, I thought of you and I'm like, uh, Chingo Bling. And he's throwing my name in the mix. And that's when Kat was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. See, Kat was working on music at the time a lot. Mm. So he's like, whoa, 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 you know Chingo Bling. He's like, yeah, yeah, a kid from Texas. He raps and shit. I've known him for a long time. And um, I've worked with him and I'm, I, I've shown him the script. He'd be down. Kat is like, you're telling me you can get Chingo Bling. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, dude, I know Chingo Bling. Yeah, I know him. He's like, Chingo Bling the rapper. He's like, yes. He's like, okay, I want to meet him ASAP. He's like, okay. So he's like, that's why I'm calling you. It was like a Monday. He's like, what are you doing Wednesday? And I was like, uh, pfft, I think actually Nick Cannon wanted to meet. Maybe he's a free that day. I could fly into LA. I could meet both Nick Cannon and Cat Williams. How big is this? Damn. Like in 2010, after putting out a bunch of albums and shit and the music business was being weird and I'm like, I need to do something else. So I fly in on a Wednesday. Uh, Rick scoops me up. We go straight to Calabasas. Like, I don't even think we stopped anywhere. He's like, now we got to hurry up, get out of this LAX traffic, venture out to where Cat lives, where he lived at the time. So we're just like driving and driving and driving like to the boonies, the burbs, where, uh, you know, Kanye, Kim and Drake live now. And, um, so we're going through the mountains and this and that. Finally, we arrive. Welcome to beautiful Calabasas. You're in the burbs now. You're out of the L.A. County, belly of the beast. <clears throat> and um, we pull into this like gated community. It's like big ass houses. And then you're like, oh, wow. So this is where Cat lives. And then you start to see the slabs, like the lowriders <laughs> and shit. Like, OK, there's somebody, somebody's uncle is washing cars over here. Okay, somebody's watch, walking a pit bull or two. Somebody's walking a pit bull. Somebody's sparking up a blunt. There's kids playing on the, on the fucking swings. Okay, I think that's Cat's house. We pull up, big ass crib, um, by all measures, especially by California measures. Gated community. It's still hood though, because they washing cars. They're washing, <laughs> you know, they're walking the dogs and shit. And there's kids playing. And uh, a comedian, a female comedian named Cookie, at, um, I don't know what she's up to these days, but she's the one that greeted us. She walked us in. She's like, cat will be down in a minute. We're sitting now like in the foyer, big ass living room type of thing. And there's like this um, balcony of sorts up above. And we're down there just chilling, like just kind of mentally trying to prepare myself like, yo, what the fuck, bro? I'm at Cat Williams' house mm -hmm. and he's about to come talk to us. And I'm like, what the fuck? All of a sudden, like from up here in the banister, whatever you call that up there in the second floor, he's like, you just see like the little perm and shit. He's like, Chingo, motherfucking bling, delivered as promised. <laughs> and then he starts coming down the stairs, toop, 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 toop. And I'm just like, 
what the fuck? This shit's really happening. Like, my life is so weird. <laughs> this is so weird. I love this dude. Everybody loves this dude. He's funny as fuck. He comes down, boom, dap, what's up, man? And then he's, you know, Rick is more proper. He's yeah. like a little bit older than me, light skin, not really into hip hop as much. More like your Hollywood executive type. And, oh, uh, uh, yes, hey, Rick, how you doing? Chingo, man. Mm -hmm. Bam, bam, pa, pa, sta, sta. You know, we from the hood, you know? And uh, so now we're just like, kind of like, he's still handling business. So he's telling his uncle, he's like, dude, what the fuck, bro? You want to gamble again? You want to lose your money again? And he's like roasting his uncle about some shit. We're like, where are we going? And there's like a pool table. He stops to fucking hit the ball a couple times. He's roasting his uncle still. They're still beefing over some gambling situation. And now he pulls out dice and he's like, Chingo, you gamble? I was like, man, I don't remember how to roll dice since like eighth grade. You know, and he's like, I was like, I just know Mexican rules. And I wasn't a comedian at the time. I wasn't a stand-up comedian at the time. So I'm just like, I'm just going to be myself. So I'm like, dude, I just know how to play according to Mexican rules. And, he's, and now you see his wheel working. He's picking up the dice. He's like, Mexican rules. <laughs> he's like, would you put the kilos right here? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, and you got to bounce the dice off the bricks and, you know, and the loser got of this and whatever. Now, so now we're kind of, we so now we're just riffing, right? Yeah. We're just kind of trying to break the ice. And we eventually end up in his like big ass master suite, right? And I think there's like a fireplace in there. I'm sitting on the little ledge. I think Rick is sitting right there next to like the little fireplace thing cookies in there the female comedian and now he's just holding court in his big ass bedroom at some point like his chick at the time is like going shopping he has to like yeah 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 like go knock yourself out yeah <laughs> go blow 10 grand yeah. whatever <clears throat> and uh so now he's just pacing in his big ass bedroom like chain smoking i couldn't remember if it was just a black and mild i i at the time, I couldn't tell if it was weed in there. I didn't hit the motherfucker. He's just kind of like chain smoking. And he had like a little cup of something. I have no idea what's in there. But we, I mean, he held court like a professor. Talking about everything from like the bootleg DVD game. When he's just basically saying like, you know, Hollywood, they don't understand the bootleg man in the barbershop system. He's like, they don't understand the bootleg DVD um, ecosystem. You know, he's basically saying this is a marketing tool. This is grassroots. This is where the average everyday American. He's like, not everybody wants to go to the theater. He's like, you can't smoke a blunt in public in the theater. He's like, you can't take your side chick with you to the theater. He's like, some people like to bust out the DVDs, smoke the blunt at home, chill with who they, who they want to chill with. And he was just breaking down like the industry versus he was saying like, how do you navigate the space of where you're mainstream, but you're under the radar. And I feel like he's been pulling that off. Like where you, kind of, I mean, sure he gets in trouble and he still, it still ends up on the radar somehow, some way, but he's like, how do you navigate it for longevity to where they can't own you? They can't predict your move. Like they can't control you. You're just like really, really big independent. Like Kyrie was saying on RPT, like, Nobody owns me. I'm nobody's slave. I'm not beholden to nobody. I can move how I want to move. And that's one of the biggest things of why we got into independent media, why we got into, into uh, podcasting, why we got into mixtapes, why we got into stand-up comedy or whatever it may be. And he says, he says, they hate when you can go into their space, but they can't go into yours. And I think what he was trying to say is like, mainstream Oscars, like white folk Hollywood can't really communicate to your people. They can't really reach your demographic. And here's the crazy thing to tie it all together. My wife told me this the other day. She's like, how does it feel that from the time you've started, you've literally been in the space where everybody wants your demographic? He's like, you were always just the young Mexican-American kid exploring different avenues, but, like, nobody could figure out your lane. Nobody could figure, like, from, <clears throat> from like, if I have a, a release, uh, when I released They Can't Deport Us All through Asylum, Warner Brothers, I had, uh, I had a situation where the brand-new Best Buy of 610 on the Southeast had just opened up. The manager loved me. They couldn't keep my shit in stock. 
Um, they wanted to do an in-store appearance. It was like their grand opening. They're like Chingo Blings from the neighborhood. This is the new Best Buy in the neighborhood. His album just came out. We're putting in the request. We want him here. Instead, the way the system works is they don't understand your demographic. So why am I on Harrisburg at Ritmo Latino in Magnolia signing autographs with like the wrong radio station doing a fucking thing? And I'm just like, the Best Buy guy can't keep my shit on the shelves. It's right off 610. It's like in the hood. It's in the southeast. You got me in the nooks and crannies of Harrisburg. No offense. I mean, Magnolia is a shit, right? All the avenues. Shout out to all the avenues. Magnolia is a shit. Shout out to everybody that came. And, and, you know, I appreciate everybody from the distribution system that lined that up. But you're going against everything I'm trying to tell you. Like, the manager wants me over there. Anyway, back to Cat Williams. <clears throat> he would say how he talked a lot about the mixtape world. Little Wayne was killing it on mixtapes at the time. I think Gucci Man was killing it on mixtapes at the time. And he was just saying, like, how did what was his point about the mixtapes? He was basically saying, like, the hood, the grassroots is so valuable. He's like, these are the methods that you do to campaign in the grassroots. He's like, this is why the major labels can't understand the mixtape game he's like they're trying to impede you guys like he was very like he started playing some of his music and shit off the computer and i'm just like okay i didn't i didn't come here to <coughs> cat i didn't come here to hear your <laughs> your rough mixes <clears throat> of your little raps like you're the fucking comedy god bro why are you wasting your time you know what i mean i didn't really get it at the time but it was very enlightening of how he like somebody that was in the game is giving you this bird's eye view of how to navigate just all the moving parts of like how this may seem attractive, but this is valuable and not everybody can permeate and penetrate these nooks and crannies. Like he was like, that's why they can't stand Lil Wayne. You know, he was just going off. He's like, Lil Wayne, you know, wooty woo, this and that. And you know, Gucci man, he fuck around. Wooty woo. And I'm just like, watching him pace back and forth and uh, oh and then he's like do you want to make a movie you want to make a movie with me and i'm just like oh my god i, I felt like i was on so train like ah! i mean not so train uh prize is right like ding 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 like i'm about to <laughs> come on down like oh fuck this is it my life changed i'm about to do a movie with cat he said, I have a town right now in Louisiana where they're going to give us tax breaks. And he's like, I got the production crew. We own the town where we can film whatever we want. And then he was like, it could be a buddy, a buddy cop type of film where he says, um, it's basically you and me against them. It's them against us. You know, it's <laughs> us against the world. And hilarity ensues. Like this man understands plots. He understands comedy. He understands structure. And... Um, I'm really curious why I guess maybe that never panned out because it sounded like he had this whole game plan of like doing kind of like with Tyler Perry in a way, like right. we're going to drop this film and then it's the one with you and then this. And he's like, there's a town in Louisiana. We could film what we want. We get a tax break. We got the production crew. It'll be a buddy film. And I'm just like, yes, yes. You know, and as we're walking to the car, because now, it, dude, it was like four hours. It was four hours. Now it's nighttime. We're way out in Calabasas. Now he, we're kind of like walking out and he's still going like, do you want to do it? You know, do you want to do the movie with me? We're going to do it. It's in Louisiana and this and that. It's us versus them. It's the world against us. It's, it's a buddy film. It's you and I against the world and the world, you know, we're, ha we're different, but we're coming together against them and all this type of shit. And um, like he read, probably read some or like really studied film. And Rick, at the, he's just like, okay. He was kind of, at that point, he was kind of like the third wheel. Like, okay, well, I'm glad I fucking introduced y'all. Yeah. And I got to fucking be like the plus one all of a sudden <laughs> that's like not in on all the jokes, like doesn't know who Gucci Man is. You know, uh, he, he works at CBS or whatever. And, um, and then I'm like, okay, is this the part where you like give me your phone number and we're like best friends now and we send each other memes <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> and, and reply with gifts? And it's just one of those like, yeah, make sure he gets my info and whoop de woo and we're going to do it. It's a town in Louisiana. And, da, 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 da. and next thing you know, it's like, 
okay, now what? Where do we follow up? Like, yeah. now we're in the car, and I was like, wow, that was great, Rick. Like, that was so cool. We're like, man, I hope he really likes your script. And, man, dude, keep me posted, bro. Like, bro, keep me posted. And then Nick Cannon fucking flaked. That I went all the way to Cali. At least one of the meetings happened, True. right? True. So Nick Cannon flake, sorry, I was busy, something or other, Mariah on set, whoop de woo, <laughs> whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, all right. And then I bumped into Nick Cannon years later. That might have been maybe at that point, it might have been maybe like 2014 or something. It was an event for Bud Light in Vegas. Like Mario Lopez got paid to be there. Mario Lopez did <clears throat> the minimum. It's me, I was happy to be. I was happy to get a check. I was happy to be making some income from Bud Light. Like I was happy to be in Vegas, living my best life. Uh, we're poolside. I'm making connections. I'm networking. You know, I'm doing my little red carpet thing or whatever. I'm just lucky to be there, right? I'm nowhere Nick Cannon or Mario Lopez status, but Mario Lopez. You know, some of the Bud Light execs are like, hey, uh, did you see? They're like with their camera. Did you see where Mario Lopez went? I was like, yeah, I don't know, dude. In my mind, I'm like, that motherfucker bounced. He's not giving y'all not one extra minute of hanging out. He came. His agency told him where to be. The agent collected his part. His shit got wired and, and direct deposited. He's I don't know what the fuck else he was doing, but he was Audi 5000. And um uh, they're just like, uh, I wanted to get a, my wife wanted a photo with uh, Mario Lopez. You know, he's like, uh, well, oh, that sucks. And it's like, you know, these execs are in from St. Louis, Anheuser-Busch. And they're like, okay, well, Chingo. Chingo's still here. You know what I mean? Chingo was the last one to leave. <laughs> <clears throat> Nick Cannon, he hung out a little bit. But I'm like, bro, I know I didn't get paid. Nowhere near. Yeah. Well, y'all motherfuckers get paid. Y'all didn't care. It seemed like y'all weren't trying to be nice to the executives that flew in from St. Louis. Like... Y'all were doing the bare minimum. Y'all are so used to just getting hired and booked for being famous and just doing the bare minimum. And me, I was just so happy to be there getting a fraction of a crumb of probably what they got paid. And I'm trying to soak it in. I'm trying to take every picture I can, get every business card. And uh, and that turned out to be a great uh, relationship for uh, years to come. Dude, your next special should be uh, <clears throat> Life So Weird. And it should just chronic like chronologically have stories like this. This was a half an hour story that I'm still enthralled by. That I know there's parts of it that... That was said, half an hour? That was half an hour. A la verga. That you could, you could dissect and, and extrapolate more stuff from. And then just have like a whole set where it's like 20 years in the game. Started off slinging tamales and mixtapes, movies, comedy, this, that, and the other. Led to this trip, that trip, met this person... That's hilarious, man. And I forget because you do have so many stories that just they're endless. Next time I could tell you about the time the times I met Snoop and hung out with Snoop. I could tell you about the Snoop thing. I've already told you about Pharrell. Uh, I told you all the uh, Puerto Rico story, like first time seeing. Uh, I've told you all a few pit bull stories. There's still a lot more. <clears throat> pit bull stories how do you put a pin in this i know you said you kind of like all right it's you between it's you and us versus yeah it's us and versus them you it's get the a, world versus us and you get in a car and then you leave what happened uh, i think the lesson there is it needs to be more like when you're in those situations it needs to be like all right cat who do i how do i follow up like who you know whose number it ain't got to be you it could be your right hand man it yeah. could be some in your entourage the guy that holds the weed you know an email Something because, bro, you <laughs> and then he's so hard to like, he's not on social media really. You can't DM him, there's no comment section. You know, um, I that's one of the things I really admire the most about Cat Williams is how he could still tour because he's the goat and not have to be spamming you like, West Palm Beach, I'm coming, tell a friend, please, please, somebody, please. You know, I really want to come back. I don't want to I don't want to have to be like, I'm not doing Tacoma next year. I'm not doing West Palm Beach. I'm sticking to Corpus Christi and Lubbock. <laughs> um, shout out to y'all, too. Yeah, shout out to Odessa. And I love being from Texas, man. I love having all this in my backyard. Um, shit, I got a private speaking event coming up in San Antonio. I'm so looking forward to that because it's all conservatives. It's all political. And they only want me to do 15 minutes. And I'm going to fucking kill it. Bro, he I don't know what politicians are going to be there, but they're going to be like, God damn. He literally just said everything we're trying to communicate to the people in a funny way. And I want to have them dying. I want to stand in ovation. Yeah. And so hopefully it's conducive to public speaking. But, um, but basically, the moral of the story is like, bro, you need to really... Because see, here's the thing, Rob. 
I don't know if you know this about me or people gather this about me from listening. You know, they're like really maybe people in the discord. I don't know. It's been a hindrance of mine that I am not an ass kisser type of dude. Right. I don't know if you I mean. I mean, we've hung out plenty of times outside of podcasting, but like. I'm not the type of dude to be like um, calling in favors to my famous friends. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like for sure. Like how many times have you heard Baby Bash zoom in to the Chingo Chats or Frankie J or some or like have we reached out to Bun B? You know what I mean? Like when is Slim Thug scheduled? No, there's to- more conversations off of microphones and cameras than ever on. Yeah, and it's like in a way it's been a hindrance because it's kind of like I'm not the best. It's like I'm a bad friend, too, because I'm not the best at nurturing these relationships. Like, my wife will be like, hey, have you reached out to Michael Berry lately? And I'll be like, oh, we texted the other day about some stuff or, you know, we'll shoot the shit or he'll randomly call me like, what's up, bud? And I'll be like, oh, I just got off stage in San Antonio. And then he'll just fucking riff and talk shit or whatever. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I got friends, but I'm not. I, I don't know. It's just something about my personality, bro, that I'm I'm not like, um. and you'll hear probably hear when I tell you the Snoop Dogg story next time, you'll hear elements of the story. And you'll be like, why didn't you hop in the van and just fucking be a chicle? And like, uh, dude, you could literally be Snoop's blunt roller right now. Like, why aren't you part of the entourage? Like, you know, because I don't like to be. Mr. Pushy, like, oh, my God, Andrew Schultz is in town. I'm going to harass them about breakfast or something, right? Yeah. Um, Didn't you do a video last time he was in town? Yeah, we went to dinner after, uh, not the last time, the last time he did a theater, but we hung out backstage. And, you know, sure, I want to get a photo with my brother-in-law. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's shoot the shit a little bit. But, dude, you just got off stage. The adrenaline is pumping. Um, What you're familiar with. I just, yes, but I'm not familiar with doing that big ass theater, you know what I mean? Like, I'll I'll tell you a pit bull story about adrenaline. I'll tell y'all next time. But like, but like, I'm I'm just I'm not the type. Like, dude, how many times have I interacted with Nori? But I didn't nurture. I'm not just gonna be on your ass. Mm-hmm. Um, I like things to happen organically, and it just I've heard stories of when like um I don't know if it was Rogan or some of the comedians that were around Burt Kreischer, and they're like, dude. Let us in. We want to be your friend. Yeah. You know, I don't know what you call that type of personality. A leech? I, a leech? What do you mean? Like people that want to just no, be, no, no, because no. they're like, trying like, to get something out no, of you? No, no, no. That's not what I mean. Like, like Rogan and all these people are trying to be your friend, Bert. Why are you so oh. Why are you so closed off? Gotcha. Like, what is it about you, Bert, that they're having to come tell you, dude, let us in. Like, we want to be your friend type of thing Hmm. and i don't know what you call that personality or 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 what but like um there's a little bit of that where it's kind of like um it's kind of like you don't want to have people to think that like you got this because of xyz person right you want i mean that might be part of it yeah like you want it because of your own merit yeah like people might be like dude how often do you talk to bash and it's like well i mean shit he's got kids i got kids he's got a wife i got a wife lives across town he lives way across town and you know, sometimes we'll be like, hey, come through the studio, hang out, whatever, like, you know, but it's like it it takes a lot to nurture relationships. And yeah. like you, it's almost like you have to um, realistically relationships take energy and time. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there's going to be some that it's like, well, I'm going to see you once a year or I'm going to see you when I bump into you or I'm going to text you from time to time, check in. But then there's others where it's like, no, bro, we literally hang out. And obviously that's going to take more time. It's going to be like, I'm not going to jujitsu tonight. It's a whiskey and cigars night over at such and such's house yeah. or or hey, sorry, girls. I know I have my 13 year old and it's supposed to be moving night with dad and we're going to do tea time and we're going to, you know, we're, we're hanging out, making popcorn making brownies sorry girls i'm gonna go nurture this relationship of this celebrity person i know that's in town and they're doing a big performance or or whatever yeah right? yeah um but anyway that's neither here nor there so this needs to be animated by the way so really i this this is a i'm just saying it on the podcast to keep you accountable we need a spiral just like you have a joke uh, joke book have a book with these uh, story premises where you just write down from you know when you were 20 years old 18 years old to now and then we talk about them periodically, like all the stories, because I'm sure one like that conversation probably led to like meeting somebody else or talking to somebody else or like 
it kind of came together later. We're like, oh yeah, well, you know, we had this meeting about a year ago about this. Like all those stories that are you know buried in your heart. Yeah, drive. and 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 like I'm gonna tell y'all about the the, you know, the Snoop Dogg <clears throat> stories. It just leads to it could lead to I don't know how motherfuckers perceive me. Yeah. I can't control how you view me, but you know, every time I see Snoop. You know what I'm saying? Snoop would be like, chingo, motherfucking bling. You know what I mean? From just across the lobby. Like, I'm walking towards you to shake your hand type thing. And sometimes, maybe I don't see myself how sometimes others see me. Because I've been, I've, I done given y'all so many, I've, I feel like I've evolved. <laughs> I've evolved so much. Different chapters, different avenues, different lanes, different things from, you know, went back Wednesday to voiceovers to this to now you're doing a political podcast show. Now this like, <laughs> oh, shit, you do stand up and like, yeah. what the fuck? You put out a cereal bobblehead. Oh, you the bobblehead guy. Oh, you do parodies. Wait, you got some original shit. And 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 you what you've been in the studio with Jim, Jim Johnson and all these big producers or whatever. And um, I don't know what the fuck my point was, but like, I don't know how people view me or perceive me, but. Based on our interactions, I'm pretty sure they know. Like, well, he's a little different, and he ain't thirsty. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, not gonna be hara- sure. He's not gonna be tripping over himself <clears throat> to end up in your Sprinter van smoking your weed. You know, he might actually turn down your weed, and not get in your Sprinter van or Fluffy's bus. Oh yeah, no, that was fun though. But oh my god, I felt like I had alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Oh yeah, well I'll tell you about Fluffy's bus. <laughs> we need to make a note. Yeah, because yeah. that was a story. Yeah. That was a story. And these story. stories need to be animated. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on finding an animator. This, this is hilarious. Like Jingo <laughs> Bling delivered Jingo as Jingo motherfucking promised. Bling delivered as promised. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's how you meet Cat Williams. That's that's Cat being Cat right now. Back in the day, Andrew Schultz was on a show and Chris Stefano called uh, Guy Code. Remember? Uh, I don't know if you remember. Or yeah, not. yeah, they were on a show. Yeah, yeah on MTV. MTV. Yeah. And uh, they had a segment in there. It was called Good Ass Night. And it was basically like, just picture what you just said, like that story with Kat, maybe, maybe it happened at his place or somewhere else, but like, and at the end of it, and that's a good ass night. That's a hilarious story, yeah. right? That you could kind of uh, attribute something like that. And that was a whatever, fill in the blank. The fluffy one is definitely a story. It definitely has a, a beginning, middle, end, and uh, it could be turned into a bit. So I'm looking forward to telling more of these stories. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chingo Chats. We hit the 30 minute mark already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we appreciate the love. Um. Yo, if you want to sponsor the show, if you want product placement, if you want your products right here on the visual, if you want your logo on the corner of the videos, I know a way you can do all that and more. Um, you know, we're trying to grow the podcast. We want to keep it going. We don't want it to be one of those things where it's like, oh, we gave you all a few seasons, but we had to focus on other <laughs> other projects. We definitely want to keep it going, especially the way touring is looking with like <clears throat> flight prices and gas prices and everything else. It's like... You know, you definitely want to have a strong podcast department. So you guys are the most important part. And I can't wait to meet you in person. Legalized Freedom Tour. Shout out to all the patrons that contribute, the proud to pay members of the Thea. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. And uh, we'll see you next time. You guys be safe. And uh, I'll see you guys in West Palm Beach, Tacoma, Nashville, and Corpus Christi coming up. Peace.